Ruth bought by New York Americans for $125,000. New York Times. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Bob Tassinari. Ruth bought by New York Americans for $125,000. Highest price in baseball annals. January 6, 1920, New York Times. Yanks buy Babe Ruth for $125,000. Highest purchase price in baseball history paid for game's greatest slugger. We'll get new contract. Miller Huggins is now in California to sign home run king at large salary. Slated for right field. Acquisition of noted batsman gives New York club the hard-hitting outfielder long desired. Babe Ruth of the Boston Red Sox, baseball's super slugger, was purchased by the Yankees yesterday for the largest cash sum ever paid for a player. The New York club paid Harry Frizee of Boston $125,000 for the sensational batsman who last season caused such a furor in the national game by batting out 29 home runs, a new record in long-distance clouding. Colonel Rupert, president of the Yanks, said that he had taken over Ruth's Boston contract, which has two years more to run. This contract calls for a salary of $10,000 a year. Ruth recently announced that he would refuse to play for $10,000 next season, although the Boston club has received no request for a raise in salary. Manager Miller Huggins is now in Los Angeles negotiating with Ruth. It is believed that the Yankee manager will offer him a new contract which will be satisfactory to the colossus of the bat. President Rupert said yesterday that Ruth would probably play right field for the Yankees. He played in left field for the Red Sox last season and had the highest fielding average among the outfielders, making only two errors during the season. While he is on the Pacific coast, Manager Huggins will also endeavor to sign Duffy Lewis, who will be one of Ruth's companions in the outfield at the polo grounds next season. Home Run Record in Danger The acquisition of Ruth strengthens the Yankee club in its weakest department. With the added hitting power of Ruth, Bob Shockey, one of the Yankee pitchers, said yesterday the New York club should be a pennant winner next season. For several seasons, the Yankees have been experimenting with outfielders, but never have been able to land a consistent hitter. The short right field wall at the polo grounds should prove an easy target for Ruth next season, and playing 77 games at home, it would not be surprising if Ruth surpassed his home run record of 29 circuit clouts next summer. Ruth was such a sensation last season that he supplanted the great Ty Cobb as baseball's greatest attraction and in obtaining the services of Ruth for next season, the New York club made a ten-strike which will be received with the greatest enthusiasm by Manhattan baseball fans. Ruth's crowning batting accomplishment came at the polo grounds last fall when he hammered one of the longest hits ever seen in Harlem over the right field grandstand for his 28th home run, smashing the home record of 27 made by Ed Williamson way back in 1884. The more modern home record, up to last season, had been held by Buck Freeman, who made 25 home runs when a member of the Washington Club in 1899. The next best home run hitter of modern times is Gavi Cravath, now manager of the Phillies, who made 24 home runs a few seasons ago. Ruth's home run drives were distributed all over the circuit, and he is the one player known to the game who hit a home run on every park on the circuit in the same season specializes in long hits. Ruth's batting feats last season will stand for many years to come, unless he betters the record himself with the aid of the short right field under Coogan's bluff. The record he made last season was a masterpiece of slugging. He went up to the bat 432 times in 130 games and produced 139 hits. Of these hits, 75 were for extra bases. Not only did he make 29 home runs, but he also made 34 two-baggers and 12 three-baggers. Ruth's batting average for extra base hits was 657, a mark which probably will not be approached for many years to come. 
Ruth scored the greatest number of runs in the American League last season, crossing the plate 103 times. Cobb scored only 97 runs last year. Ruth was so dangerous that the American League pitchers were generous with their passes, and the superlative hitter walked 101 times, many of these passes being intentional. Ruth also struck out more than any other batsman in the league, fanning 58 times. He also made three sacrifice hits, and he stole seven bases. Ruth is a native of Baltimore and is 26 years old, just in his prime as a baseball player. He was discovered by Jack Dunn, owner of the Baltimore club, while playing with the baseball team of Mount St. Joseph's, a school which Ruth attended in that city, in 1913. In 1914, Ruth played with the Baltimore team, and up to that time little attention had been paid to his batting. It was as a pitcher that he attracted attention in Baltimore. Boston bought Ruth along with Ernie Shore and some other players in 1914. The price paid for Ruth was said to have been $2,700. Holds World Series Record Ruth was a big success in the Major League from the start. In 1916, when the Red Sox won the pennant, he led the American League pitchers in effectiveness, and in the World Series of 1916 and 1918, Ruth hung up a new World Series pitching record for shutout innings. He pitched 28 consecutive scoreless innings, which beat the record of 27 scoreless innings made in World Series games by Christy Mathewson of the Giants. For the past few seasons, Ruth's ambition has been to play regularly. While he was doing only pitching duty with Boston, he was a sensational pinch hitter, and when he played regularly in the outfield last season, he blossomed forth as the most sensational batsman the game has ever known. He was also a great success as a fielder, and last season he made only two errors and had 230 putouts. He also had 26 assists, more than any outfielder in the American League. This was because of his phenomenal throwing arm. His fielding average last season was 992. Ruth didn't do much pitching last season. He pitched 13 games and won 8 and lost 5. Manager Huggins is expected back in New York at the end of next week with Ruth's contract in his inside pocket. It is believed that the New York club will not try to hold Ruth to the Boston contract, which he has decided is unsatisfactory. The new contract which the Yankees have offered Ruth is said to be almost double the Boston figure of $10,000 a year. While he is out on the coast interviewing Ruth, Huggins is also getting into line not only Duffy Lewis, but also Bob Musil, the sensational young slugger of the Pacific Coast League, who is regarded by baseball scouts as the minor league find of the year the perfect hitter. Ruth's principle of batting is much the same as the principle of the golfer. He comes back slowly, keeps his eye on the ball, and follows through. His very position at the bat is intimidating to the pitcher. He places his feet in perfect position. He simply cannot step away from the pitch if he wants to. He can step only one way, in. The weight of Ruth's body when he bats is on his left leg. The forward leg is bent slightly at the knee. As he stands facing the pitcher, more of his hips and back are seen by the pitcher than his chest or side. When he starts to swing, his back is half turned toward the pitcher. He goes as far back as he can reach, never for an instant taking his eye off the ball as it leaves the pitcher's hand. The greatest power in his terrific swing comes when the bat is directly in front of his body, just halfway in the swing. He hits the ball with terrific impact and there is no player in the game whose swing is such a masterpiece of batting technique. End of article.